Morning. It's Saturday, October 31st. I guess today is Halloween, if I think about it. But it doesn't seem like anything's going to be happening because I certainly am not putting out any candy for the kids. And I don't think they should be roaming the streets like they usually do, close together. Now, if they're wearing masks, that's okay. That's a Halloween tradition. But that's not why I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the second stimulus package. It turns out that the White House and the Democrats in Congress were never close to a deal. So let's look at what's been happening over the past, I don't know, it's got to be months old. But I'll bring up the date on some things that have happened recently. A couple of days ago, I think it was on Tuesday, the president said, after the election, we will get the best stimulus package you have ever seen. I think we're going to take back the House because of her, meaning Nancy Pelosi. I think you have a lot of congressmen and women Republicans that are going to get elected and we'll take back the House, and we'll hold the Senate, and we'll hold the White House. And then we'll get the greatest stimulus package of all time. One of the major sticking points in this package has been the request for aid to the financially strapped states and localities, which Trump claims are all run by Democrats. And he categorically said, Pelosi is only interested in bailing out badly run, crime-ridden Democratic cities and states. That's all she's interested in. She's not interested in helping people. Well, who cares whether these people are Democrats or Republicans? If the cities need the money, then Trump should be willing and his Senate should be willing to give them the money. And beside that, there are Republican cities that are strapped too. So I think it's a very narrow view they're taking on this track. But in any event, Pelosi did send a letter to Mnuchin stating several points which have to be addressed in order to get this stimulus package moving. And it turns out that the difference is not that great right now. I think that the Republicans are willing to go to $1.9 trillion, and the Democrats want something like $2.3 trillion. So, you know, what's a half trillion here, more or less? Let's get this thing done. But realistically, nothing's going to happen before the election. That's where it stands right now. But let me go back to a couple of points. So in Pelosi's letter, she asked for funding for schools and fundings for child care and tax credits for lower income workers and unemployment insurance and federal safety standards for businesses seeking protections against lawsuits. Those are in her letter in addition to the state funding. And she said in her letter, we're waiting for an answer. Your responses are critical for our negotiations to com- to continue. And then Newton sent back his own letter. And in Nugent's letter, he said, because your letter to me inaccurately describes the status of our current negotiations, I feel obligated to respond. He said Pelosi was the one who refused to compromise on state and local aid, liability protections for businesses, school funding, and extended unemployment insurance benefits. We have provided responsible compromise positions, he wrote. He criticized Pelosi for refusing to pass items that had bipartisan support, such as more aid for small businesses and airlines, as well as for dismissing the proposed compromise offered by the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, co-chaired by the Democrat Josh Gottheimer of the 5th District. I personally don't think it matters who co-chairs the thing, but that's the information I got. 
Now, Pelosi also wanted another $75 billion to expand testing and contact tracing and treatment to combat the coronavirus. And so that's all included in the bill, but the Republicans are having a problem with that. And the Democrats are having And the whole problem is they're all having a problem. And I think both parties right now are just waiting for the results of the election. It's clear to me in the arguments that went back and forth between Pelosi and Nuchin and Trump throwing his two cents in. And I haven't heard that Biden threw any two cents into this thing, but I assume he had something to do with it. So they're all going to wait till the election is over. And then they'll figure out what to do with the money. Now that could take A long time. I don't see why it matters who wins the election. The people need the money now. Are we going to take care of our people? And it all depends on the way we look at these people. It appears to me that each party is looking at the people separately. They're looking at them as Democrats or Republicans. They're not really looking at the people who are hurting. I'm sure there are poor and wealthy people in both sides of the aisle. So I don't understand why it's taking so long to get this thing done. Why they can't compromise. What's the difference between 1.9 trillion and 2.2 trillion? What's the difference between one great big package and several small packages? All of this is nonsense in my mind. And they're waiting for the election because then the party that wins the election will be heroes. Well, to me, both parties suck. There can be no heroes in this mess. The heroes in this mess are the people on the front line fighting this damn virus. And the scientists who have given the correct information as they learn more and more about this deadly virus, which keeps on mutating and changing, and it may be deadlier, it may not be so deadly. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? Anyhow, here we are on Halloween worrying about getting money for people and worrying about keeping people safe. And that's what we should be doing. And we should be acting on that. We should not allow our politics to get in the way of the health of this country. And once again, I'm fed up and I've run out of time. So I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the morning. And if you choose to celebrate Halloween Go for it, but wear a mask and stay safe. Bye.